which would basically be a formula such as this. And then you would have subschedules that would be expanding on each of those line items as needed. That's not exactly how the tax code came about because it used to be that the tax code was very simple, meaning you can, most people can do their taxes on one side of a, a postage card uh, sized piece of paper. That was the idea. It was supposed to be very easy uh, for most people to do their taxes. But as things got complex, they didn't want to add other forms. Instead, they wanted to keep everything on one page or one form, Form 1040. So you ended up with multiple types of forms, like a 1040 easy and so on and so forth, because they were trying to make it so you just need one form. That was like the selling point, even though things were getting more complex. Uh, and then they tried to simplify the code doing something like what we're doing at this point in time, because these days you're not getting the actual forms from like the post office and filling them out by hand. You're getting them from a computer. So therefore having multiple pages isn't as big as a problem as it might have been before when you wanted a piece of paper that you can fill out just one line item. So we'll touch more on that later when we get when we compare this to the actual tax form. But for right now, we've got the line items. The first line item is income. Now income, of course, is kind of part of an income statement because we're talking about an income tax. So the first half of the formula is an income statement, although a strange one, an income statement having income and then expenses. Now, from a business perspective, usually those expenses are the things that you had to consume in order to generate the income. However, when you're talking about individual income, uh, the income statement is more complex because the things that we spend money on are often personal. The goal not being to generate income, but to live well, right? So the expenses are going to get a little bit wonky on our income statement, right? But the income line is pretty straightforward. The IRS basically saying everything is income unless we say otherwise is the general idea. And we'll dive into that. There's, of course, a lot of gray area then with the income statement. What needs to be included in income? What needs to not be included in income? Whenever someone has a question about you know, money that they have received, loans that have forgiven or something like that, then those... All those questions are about the income line item. Is that going to be included or excluded, increasing or decreasing the income line item on the tax formula? Obviously, for taxes, income going up is actually bad because everything is flipped on its head for taxes. Taxes disincentivizing to income, right? So we, so, so it's everything's backwards. Then we have the types of deductions. Now, the deductions can be broken out to what you might used to be called like above the line deductions versus below the line deductions. Uh, or you might call them, these are like schedule one deductions because now they have the schedule thing or adjustments to income. When you hear adjustments to income, that's basically a deduction because it's lowering the income line item. Uh, it's just another word, another, again, another phrase that you could use for these line items for the types of deductions. The point is that these ones are separate than the itemized deductions and the standard deductions. These are the ones that are more rare, except that possibly like an IRA deduction is, is fairly common uh, in this section. But most deductions that you think of are gonna be either the generic standard deduction or the things that are within the itemized deductions, such as charitable deductions, state tax deductions, and. Uh, things of that nature. That gets us to a subtotal, adjusted gross income or AGI. So you can kind of think of this if you had an income statement that sells like, that sells like manufacturing, uh, like uh, inventory, I mean, you have, in, you, you could have, well, you could also have returns and allowances on an income statement. So income minus like the returns or something gives you the adjusted gross income, or you can think of an income statement has an income and then the cost of goods sold, the things if you sell inventory gets you like, like that subtotal gross profit. It's all getting you, it's all going the same direction. Your income is going down from top to bottom of the income statement, but there's these subtotals along the way. This is one for basically the income tax return kind of income statement. So we have the adjusted gross income AGI, very important subtotal because most of the phase, out, phase outs that we talk about, meaning as we look at deductions, as we look at credits, those being good things, because they're kind of like expenses, although credits are a little different, we'll talk about in a second, but 
uh, as those th as those things go higher, as our income goes higher, we might phase out those items. They might we might lose them, and it's not usually based on the top line income, but on the AGI adjusted gross income. So that's why that's a very important line item. And then we have the greater of two types of deductions, either the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. Now, this is a, an area a few years ago, there's been some back and forth to try to simplify the tax code and, and so on and so forth. And the idea of that would be, 